Overlord is a very strange uh, concoction because it, it it is a war movie, but it, it, it is a horror film. It's an action movie, but it's also a drama. It's got a big heart. It's actually very funny. It's it, it, it's all these bizarre things in one package. And I think Julius approached it from a point of view that allowed me to see it, they could all coexist. Billy Ray wrote an incredible script. It just felt to me like if Rod Serling were still uh, here and still writing, that this is the kind of thing that he would have written. And it was um, intense, and it was funny, and it was full of of characters and, and action and drama. And I remember reading that whole script, and it was just such a kind of horror thrill ride that uh, I knew it was something that, in the right hands, could be really uh, fun and creepy and and uh, bizarre. And I just, I love the vibe of it, and I, I love the characters in it, and so it was, uh, it all just started with that script. Then Lindsay Weber and I developed it with Julius Avery, the director, and uh, I think he's really done an incredible job. I think the thing that I love the most uh, about about the premise was that it it took a sort of classic World War II adventure movie and it it smashed it into uh, a sort of monster horror film. And the idea of those two coexisting just felt like it could be an incredibly intense and fun ride. And the thing about you know a, a war story is you don't need more monsters than 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 humans in that world. The horrors of war are already there. And so what's weird is that, you know, you suddenly get into this sort of, you know, freakish sort of fantasy horror level, and it doesn't feel like that much of a stretch. Um, and, and I think that the, you know, what I, what I felt reading the script was that it could be, in some cases, beautiful, in other cases, uh, as intense uh, as a straight war movie. But then it also had the potential of going to a place that was, you know, clearly you know, in, in the realm of, of horror science fiction. And, and I, just, I just thought that combination, you know, done right could really hit the sweet spot. I think one of the things that, that we try to do at, at Bad Robot uh, on, on genre stories is tell stories that are as much about the people and, and the, the characters as possible, but they often go into places and things happen that are clearly impossible, clearly extreme, clearly horrific and freaky and, and, and bizarre. And, and while not everything we do, you know, has monsters in it, this one does. And I feel like monster movies are great and, and best when you believe the situation, you believe the characters, you're truly invested, uh, and you get something that is, you know, while rationally impossible, because you love the characters, because you relate to them, you believe the world, you believe the situation, and it's that much scarier. What I loved about Joyce's approach to the movie is that he looked at it as if it were a mission movie, a war movie, that goes to a place that is really freakish and really scary. He really got the, the, the feeling of what the, you know, the opening needed to be to set the table for then what becomes, I think, an incredibly bizarre, creepy and, and freaky film. Um, but I love that he was coming into it from a place that I'd want to keep watching it just, you know, as a, a war film, as a thriller, as an action movie. We knew that the character of Ford had to be someone that both intimidated you on some level, uh, but also is the guy you'd want uh, as, as part of your team if you were going to be, you know, you know, parachuting into uh, occupied France. And when we saw uh, Wyatt Russell, uh, he was, he, he had all the qualities because he's a very likable guy and, and comes across, you know, really kind of in a, in a lovely way. But he does have a, a, an undeniable strength and intensity and, and sort of toughness. And so it, he was someone that we got really excited about. We needed to really feel like I believe this guy's a soldier. I believe what he's been through. He's a tough ass, you know, guy, and yet I can't help but respect him. And it, it's harder to find that combination of things than you might think. We knew we needed a character in Boyce who was the audience, essentially, someone you'd really relate to, that you'd watch and feel like, I'd be that afraid 
I'd be that unsure. I'd be that, you know, concerned. And we looked at a lot of different people. And uh, Javon Adepo came in, and he just was so... Um, he was so good. He was so... He was relatable. He was smart. He had a, a great sense of uh, of kind of, you know, depth to his character. You, you believe that he was... You could see that he was a guy that was like found himself suddenly in battle, you know, at, in, in the middle of a war. And you could imagine he was just a normal kid, you know, days ago. And now he's like a soldier in the middle of stuff he can't fathom. And of course, it gets crazier and weirder, and, you know, as the story goes on. With Chloe, we needed, you know, this was sort of like, you know, the farm girl that they come across, like, like in an archetypical way. But of course, she needed to be much more than that. She needed to be someone who was, you know, raising her family, who was putting up with being living in this in this Nazi-occupied village. She needed to be needed to be a basically a surrogate parent to her little brother, uh, Paul. She needed to be someone who, given the circumstances of the movie, had to stand up for herself, had to defend herself, had to become, you know, uh, as as intense and vicious, and despite being terrified as strong as she could ever imagine and, and beyond, uh, we found Mathilde Olivier and she was not only, uh, you know, strong and, and believable and, and lovely, but also uh, she had a great sense of humor. She had a great, uh, she held the screen, you know, like the best of them. She just, you really, uh, I think she's someone who just sort of commands the screen, is great to watch. She's an amazing, uh, Actress, French actress. The villain is so is famously always the most fun character uh, to play, and I think that 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 Pilou, he takes on this character of Waffner in a way that is, um, it's definitely this. He's so good, and it's got this larger than life vibe, but it doesn't feel scenery chewy. It's not like he's sort of overdoing it. I think that the fun of this guy is, he's so intense and he's so wicked and he's so you know uh he just seems to have this kind of not just a cold heart but this kind of terrifying uh ambition the most important thing with any ensemble and this certainly is one is how do they all work together you had a lot of people uh, that you had to sort of keep track of, uh, and it was just important that everyone stand out, have their own distinct personality, and I do think you really follow each one of them and have a sense of their personalities individually by the end of the movie. But of course, having the group was really important. You needed to believe that they, you know, had uh, had been, in some cases, fighting together before, in other cases, you know, in this group for the first time, but you needed to get their, you needed to feel their energy and, and, and their dynamic, and we were very lucky with this cast. One of the things I think about Overlord that's especially cool is how the movie looks and feels. Uh, it, it's it got a, I think, a big and beautiful production vibe, and part of that is, like, the set designs that uh, John Henson uh, did, and some of it is the fact that we were on these really awesome locations, the village that they go to, Ciel Blanc, which, um, while it was a set that was built, uh, has, I think, an incredible look and feel to it and the, you know when they go into the lair uh, underneath the the church on the hill uh, what you find down below it really is creepy and terrifying and kind of maze of labs that uh, you find underground I just think it was beautifully built incredibly done and you know wonderfully shot so I think we're really lucky that the production looks as good as it does uh, on a movie that is as scary and genre specific as it is if you go to see Overlord, what you're going to get is an incredibly fun, thrilling, terrifying, weird, freaky, uh, bizarre, sweet, uh, and ultimately wildly satisfying roller coaster ride.